we are discussing the protests sweeping Iran and Canada's new sanctions against that government. So, Kave, the Canadian government has announced new sanctions against Iran. What do those include and how are they different from uh, the pre-existing sanctions? Because there have been sanctions against Iran for a long time. There have been sanctions against Iran for a number of years. This one just um, expands the list of sanctioned people. Um, and entities. So now there are some uh, leading generals and leading uh, figures in the Revolutionary Guard Corps, which is a very feared and violent uh, arm of the Iranian regime. Uh, some of those figures are listed as sanctioned, and them and their families, um, and also some entities related to the RGC, and also uh, Press TV, which is um, uh, Iran's English language sort of propaganda channel. Um, this isn't quite what activists have been pushing for. Um, we had wanted the IRGC in its entirety, not just sanctioned, but also listed as a terror group. Um, we haven't gotten there yet, but I think this is a pretty good start for Canada. Kevin, are there any countries that have listed the IRGC as a terror group or sanctioned that, that organization itself? Yeah, the Trump administration actually listed the IRGC as a terror group, and they were told, you know, the sky would fall if uh, they designated them as a, as a terrorist organization, and nothing has happened. Um, uh, you know, Iran basically had to accept that designation. Uh, we've been pushing Canada to do the same. I don't quite understand the reluctance on the part of our elected officials, but hopefully they'll change their mind. Shaparik, as we said, there have been existing sanctions against the regime. These new ones expand the list. But do you think that that will have much impact that will be any different from the pre-existing sanctions? Do you think that the regime is going to listen to what Canada does? Um, unfortunately, I don't think it, that's enough. It, uh, that's not what uh, like um, Iranian activists wants. And also, um, uh, um, the the families of the victim of uh, flight PS seven five two who had lost their family members, their loved ones by the IRGC. That's not what they want. Uh, this is this is not quite enough. Unfortunately. So you mentioned this this flight that was shot down by Iran, which included, I think it was 50 Canadians and 30 permanent residents. Uh, Kave, we haven't talked about this on the show yet, but I think that's important background to understand. What can you tell us about that, uh, what happened in that case? So what happened was um, one night, this was after um, the Trump administration had killed Qasem Soleimani, one of uh, the RGC generals. Um, Iran, even though it knew that you know, there was some conflict predicted. It kept its um, airspace open and allowed it a few commercial flights to fly. Uh, our theory, I'm, I'm somebody that helps and advises the families, our theory is that they were put up there basically as human shields. Um, and the IRGC shot two missiles at this at this plane, killing 176 people. Um, since then, you know, the families- This was a civilian just, passenger just plane. Civilian, yeah, none of the, these people had anything to do with the conflict. They were not political. They were just like you and I getting on an airplane, going on a trip. Uh, the flight was supposed to go from Tehran to Kiev, and a lot of those people were then headed from Kiev to Toronto or Montreal or elsewhere. Um, you know, Iran has, has initially denied that it was responsible, and then eventually Western intelligence exposed them. They have hidden the black box. They raised the um, the, the the ground where, where it like they basically have stood in the way of an investigation every single step of the way. Um, and we're continuously pushing for the IRGC that was responsible for this uh, to be listed as a terror group for this one action alone. I mean, it's it's committed hundreds of other crimes, but this action alone should um, deem it to be a terror organization. Shaparik, how has the Canadian government responded to what happened on that flight? What have they done for the families of the people who were killed by the Iranian regime? Uh, they uh, like uh, they have been supporting, uh, but at the same time they act weakly. Um, they haven't done anything. Like uh, they just uh, like it's just uh, I'm so sorry. It's just words and uh, sympathy, but uh, nothing more than that so far. Kave, anything you want to add in about forty seconds to what <laughs> what Canada sure. has done? What they, what they, um, I mean, they've paid a lot of rhetorical lip service. Um, they've engaged in some negotiation with Iran, but you know, those negotiations have broken down. The time has now come to refer this matter to the International Civil Aviation Organization, which can be the path to the International Court of Justice. And the time has come for Canada to support the families 
as they take this case to the International Criminal Court. And Canada hasn't done those things, unfortunately. Yeah, and that, the International Civil Aviation uh, Organization, I think, is actually based in, in Montreal. Based in Montreal. Yeah, Correct, yes. so it's it's surprising that our government hasn't done more related to the death of so many Canadians and Canadian uh, residents.